Hi, it's Carol from Crinkled Path Journals back with the flight journal start to finish. Hopefully you've been following along with this series. If not, click on the playlist and find the flight journal. Okay, now what you've been waiting for, signature sewing in. I'll show it to you twice with these and then I'll do the rest off camera so as not to bore you and then we'll get on to the next step. Signatures. So I've got my needle, I've got some wax thread, and I typically go the height of the book three times, plus a little extra. I don't like to waste, but a little bit of waste is for insurance that I'm getting it in okay. I'm using the wax thread because I feel like it's the sturdiest. It's made for book binding. You can use embroidery thread or upholstery thread, um, but you're depending on how much use a book is going to get, those can tend to wear out over time. Wherever you start your needle is where your tie will end up at the end. And so if you want your tie in the middle and you want the little dangly threads or the knot to be where it's visible, you can, you start on the inside. Some people like to hang little charms because this is for a young man. I'm keeping a nice clean look and I'm going to start from the outside. So I'm going to grab my spine. I need to go through the hole on the one, which remember I'm looking at the back of the book. This is the part that's the front. So signatures are going to be one, two, three, four. So here we're going to go one, two, three, four. Over clarifying. <laughs> Almost all the way through, through my center hole. Sorry, my lighting, when I hold things up, it blocks it. I'm going to go up through the top hole. Get that nice and tight. Then I'm going to go through the number one hole on the board. Almost lost my thread here. Give yourself time and patience. It doesn't have to look pretty while you're doing it. Once you get it tight and through, you're going to come all the way down to the bottom hole of the spine. Go through that. It's okay if it's a little bit loose. Like I, I don't wanna pull this middle string out completely from the board, but if it's not super tight in between here, as you're doing it, it's okay. You can tighten it up when you get to the end. I'm going back through my bottom hole. Back to the middle. Giving myself a little bit of space to see. And then once this is through, Oops, see, I went through the thread there. You don't want to go through your other thread because then you can't tie a nice tight knot. So let's see if I can get that fixed. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to pull it tight. We're going to make sure we're not bulging or have anything caught. This is nice and flat. This is straight with the bottom of your signature. I can take my thread off 
the needle. And tie this. And I actually kind of like to tie the other thread in the knot as well. The thread that's going the full length just gives it an extra security. And I do a double knot there. And then they're not going to show, so I'm just leaving a little extra. Then you can release your binder clips. And your first signature is sewn to the spine. Now we're going to repeat with the second one. Find my needle. If your holes are tight or the hole in the cardboard is tight and you need help pushing it through, use a thimble. Don't hurt your finger. <laughs> We're going to start in the middle hole again. Leave our tail. Make sure this is right side up. We're gonna go through the center hole. You want the clips uh, to hold tight because you want to be able to come through that original hole that you made. And if you move, remove the clips before you do this, you may never get those lined up again. Up through here, go to an outside hole, try not to pull this string out. <laughs> Down through this signature and then through the spine. Make sure we're not caught on anything. Get this one, this piece nice and tight. All the way down to the bottom. Find the hole. Okay, so just so you can see it here, we came up through the spine, we went through the middle here, we went to the top hole and back down, then we went the whole length across, back up and into the signature again, and then I'm going back into the center hole. Back down through my spine. our needle off so we don't lose it and then we are going to pull it tight you have to get it tight when you're sewing it in 
because once it's tied off, if it's loose, your signature will move around in the book and you want it nice and tight in there. So I'm gonna slide one of these under so that I catch that middle cord when I tie it. And again, I'm going to do a double knot. And leave some strings. I tend to leave strings because if something happens and you find a mistake at the last minute and you have to redo a signature, if you don't have extra, you're going to have to start all over with string. And now we have two signatures tied in our book. So we're just gonna keep working our way across. I'm gonna do that off camera. You can start at the back and move forward or at the front and move towards the back. Uh, I think it, it just works to go in one direction. Um, I know this is often the most intimidating part for new journal makers. And I would start with something like a paper bag journal to practice this um, stitch. Uh, I will link you to a very simple tutorial that I did on my Bible journaling channel from the very first little prayer paper bag journal that my friend taught me how to make that very clearly just shows you how you stack pages and practice this pamphlet stitch with no spine. So I'll link that in the description box. And I'll see you back in a minute when I finish the signatures. Okay, so here's the final product with all the signatures sewn in. Unfortunately, this very first signature got bent a little bit, which I'm not happy about, but if that's the worst thing I did to it while I was sewing those all in. So now I need to attach the two covers so I'm gonna attach these this way, and then um, I'm going to cover the back and also put the end papers in. So in every other journal that I've made, I have put the three pieces together, the front, the back, and the spine, like I'm going to show you here. But then I've wrapped the entire thing all the way around with fabric. But because I wanted this star paper to show behind the signatures, I'm having to be a little creative with how I'm putting the fabric on the back of this. So when you put the cover onto the spine, you need to leave about an eighth of an inch margin so that this will fold without cracking. And typically what I like to do is build the book and then place this in with the double-sided carpet tape. So let me give myself so we have two and a half inches for the spine and then I want to leave space on either side. So let's say almost to three. I'm going to use a little bit of this double-sided carpet tape. Just to hold it in place. So typically I would do the spine and then sew the signatures into it with the cover on. I just have to be really careful when I do this that I'm measuring the same at the top and the bottom. I've seen a lot of different things for book binding, but I really just like this carpet tape. It's double-sided, it's cheap. You can get it at Walmart or you know some other discount store. 
Um, it's a duct tape brand and it's very strong. So now that I've got these in place, I'm going to put them the whole way. It's going to stick to my silicone mat, but that's okay. It'll come up. So I'm trying to figure out if this will cover. I think it's a just barely kind of thing. I'm going to say there is as close to getting everything covered as we're going to get. I wish I had a bigger piece or something else I could use, but kind of down to the last wire here. So now I'm going to pull up the backing. Come on. Get this side stuck. Then pull up the backing on this side. And get this side stuck. hanging over and then I may use a little patch of this if I really think that it needs it. Okay, let's get this unstuck from my silicone mat. Flip it over and we're going to put more carpet tape to reinforce this fold. Now remember, we measured the width wider than our spine because we want it to be able to fold up on the sides. Um, and we're just gonna put this carpet tape all the way down. I'm gonna have to lift up and take the paper off of these little cross pieces. When it comes to this carpet tape, I'm all about using more than I think I need. So now I can pull this paper up. Pull it off the end and then stick this back down. Do the same thing on this side. Rip them up, get the paper out of there, and then lay them back 
down. Okay, now we're gonna take these off. I usually use Fabri-Tac on this. My Fabri-Tac and my Fabric Fusion are both out. Kind of gonna overdo it on the glue. Center this. Then I'm going to glue in my inside end papers. that dry. I'm going to try a little voiceover recording here because at this point in my house my adult kids had all shown up after dinner and my daughters were chattering away in the next room and were doing dishes. If you're a mama and you know what's good for you and your kids are doing dishes and enjoying conversation together, you do not stop that because <laughs> you're shooting a video. So I just turned the sound off here and I'll talk you through what happened. So I got the end papers in and I got a little awkward there. Uh, I put the back page on upside down and so then I had to take it off and so then I did the first side and then did the, the back. Um, but because I had glue on both, I had to have my husband hold it. So here I'm just trimming down the end papers to help them fit properly. I'll also take a moment to try and clear up something that I think probably wasn't really clear earlier in the video. So I was saying that typically I make the spine and the cover together put fabric all the way around it and then I sew the signatures to the spine or in the case of a hidden spine you can make a spine and then do your signatures onto thin cardboard or another piece of heavier fabric and glue it inside the completed cover. What I did here was very different and a new challenge for me and I do like the way it turns out in the end. So I ended up trimming this fabric down. I later went and put more fabric over the ends, just a little black piece and I had used some of it for trim and then my video cut out. So you will see the end product when I do a flip through video. So here I'm just reinforcing. I just feel like it's really important to check and double check your seams and your edges and make sure everything is tight when you're making a journal for somebody else because you don't want it to fall apart. You don't want that person to have to come back to you and have things repaired. And so I'm just over fussing around with the little corners and 
uh, any place that I felt like something was not a hundred percent. I wanted to get this piece from the original spine on and I really liked the way it looked going horizontal across the back and it kind of reminds me of those ridges that are in old books on the spine and so I like the way it ended up not being vertical on the spine but just that little horizontal piece and it was the perfect width. So this was the final touch. I just used some kind of heavy seam binding in black and I used it to put trim on all the edges of the spine. Well, we've made it to the second to the last video in this series. So join me again for the last one, which will be the flip through. Thanks so much for following along for subscribing and watching and commenting. I love that you are an active community and I appreciate all you do to interact with this channel. There was ever so slightly a sliver of this piece of fabric that needed to be inserted up into that corner to make it complete and it was able to slide right under the trim and it'll hardly be noticed. <laughs> Thank you again, and bye-bye.